it. Some hate it. Here it is. It's the Wildcat look. This give is to McCoy. McCoy's got the first down and more. And he's brought down after a good... Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Alright, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, bringing you another Madden 18 Money Play video. Uh, I almost want to call this more like a review. This is one of the most unique formations uh, that I've ever seen put into the game that I'm going to go over today. And I, I don't really feel comfortable calling it a money play or a mini scheme. It is a mini scheme, uh, but there's really only one play at the moment that I would say is a straight up money play. The, the formation is the Gun Monster. Uh, there is a Gun Monster stack out there, but this is the Ravens playbook I'm using, and they have the Gun Monster in it. And now you look at the three plays. There's only three plays in this whole formation. It's the PA screen, the inside zone, and the PA wheels, which I'm going to go over all three. Uh, but I would say that the only one out of these three that I would say is an absolute money play uh, is the inside zone. And there's, I mean, this formation is so uh, capable of being uh, cheesy and unstoppable to the point where Madden had to already put some kind of prerequisite uh, they basically put a lot of things around to make sure that it wasn't cheap and cheesy and I'll go over that in the video uh, but basically like I said there is one true uh, really good money play and that's the inside zone so we'll pick that first now on defense I went with a uh, random 4-3 and you can see right away something doesn't look right here what is going on the defense which I think a lot of people worried about when they saw this formation before um, the game came out the defense essentially um, it, it, there's two down linemen the defense reacts to the offense I've never seen that before where you can call playing offense and it basically changes what the defense looks like and you know right away you have a three blocking advantage three men blocking on the offensive line to two on the defensive line I mean just look let's slow this down again just look at how this looks you have one linebacker it's basically three guys in the box versus your three guys in the box and if you just make half a read you're going to get a big play and it looks like you're almost running like a punt return uh, the way that the play develops I mean, there are scenarios where uh, this doesn't work, um, but it's I, I ran this in game already, and it's just like, to me, it's ridiculous that EA even put this in the game. As you can see, I'm getting like 15 to 20 yards on a simple inside zone. I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't think it's capable of necessarily busting too many touchdowns, but who needs that? You can run this, you know, essentially all the way down the field. I mean, there's just... You know, and it doesn't matter what defense you call. That's the other thing that's really weird about it. Um, I tried it against here. I called timeout because I wanted to see um, if there was any other. If, if I called a different defense, would it come out differently? Um, as you see, I pick, I'm just picking the exact same play here. But basically, I wanted to pick like, you know, I was hoping they'd have like a 4-4 or something on defense. But since I picked the Bengals, the biggest thing they had was a 4-6. And sure enough, it's the exact same look. So I don't know if a goal line would be different. I mean, that's about the only thing that I would say uh, might um, change this. Uh, but you can see there are scenarios where it actually does stop. There are uh, certain ways you can bring like a fourth man in the box. Or you see how this guy blitzes. Uh, he just gets behind the line. I mean, you don't have great protection. But, I mean, there's there's ways that it's not an unstoppable play, but this is pretty much, um, you know, me just running this in succession to the point where it's it's just it just seems really ridiculous that this plays in the game. I mean, you know, if somebody, if you run this to, to exhaustion, somebody can send, like, full house blitzes and stop you. Uh, and that's one of the things that makes this play not so great. Um, if somebody does do that, you can't, you have to mix it up. You can't just run the same thing over and over. So that's why I'm going to go over the two other plays and probably the best ways uh, to run them, uh, which is kind of unique because basically the way that this formation is set up is one, you can't make audible adjustments. You can't motion a receiver. You can't uh, change what a receiver is doing. And another thing you can't do is you can't change plays. There's no way you can't audible. Say you see a look you do like or don't like, you can't change plays. So it's basically a chess match to the point where whatever you pick, uh, that better be right because whatever defense you're seeing, you're stuck going against. So here I'm going to pick the second play, uh, which is the uh, the only pass play. It's not the screen play. I forget the name. I said at the beginning of the video. But um, the pass play out of this formation uh, has a pretty unique look. Uh, which I'm going to go ahead and we'll pause it. But basically you have those two uh, routes coming over the middle. You can see there's nothing with space. Uh, I think it's the B route and the X route kind of do like a little uh, little curl 
towards in towards um, you know the center of the field, but you see the huge gaps. So those receivers are going to be open quite a bit, especially if your opponent is worried about the run. They're probably going to bring a linebacker or a safety down and really be worried about that. And you can see here, one of these guys is going to be wide open, especially if your user is covering the middle of the field by himself. He can't cover both guys. He can't cover the left receiver and the right receiver. Uh, see here, once again, that middle linebacker is just stuck in the middle, not knowing who to pick, not knowing who to choose. Obviously, it's a computer, but even a user, you can't cover both. I mean, it, you, you're one man. You can only cover one guy. Uh, you can see, though, it, once again, it's susceptible to certain coverages. The man coverage might give it trouble where that guy jumped it there. Um, and if those two receivers aren't open, I can't say that the streaks are necessarily great options. The streak routes, um, they can get open against certain things, but realistically, you don't have, you're not going to have the most time to wait for those to get open. Your, your real reads are really just to catch your opponent off guard with these little dink and dunk passes. Um, and I think that's really successful. Now, um, like I said, they're not always going to be open. There are coverages that get in the way of that and, and can really stop it. And if they're shut down, if they're covered, say somebody runs a man or something like that, you could really be in trouble. Um, but there are some ways to kind of get around that, and I'll explain that too. Uh, with the new passing system, the new target passing system, you can really make something out of those outside uh, receivers, but a lot of people aren't going to be ready uh, with the new target passing because it's, it's really kind of hard to master. Um, so I'll, I'll go over that a little bit. As you see there, you know, the tight coverage is, is giving this a little bit of trouble. I'll go over the new target passing a little bit. Now, how target passing works this year is really unique. Um, you know, there, there's there's a real in-depth way I could go into it, but I really just want to keep this, keep this simple. Uh, basically, your left and your right joystick are really essential um, to target passing. You have to use them both. I'm basically going to redirect the receiver entirely and bring him over the middle of the field on what's basically like a, a deep post route, uh, which like I said, there's no real coverage over the middle. So if the lower guy is covered, uh, the later guy is gonna be open. And I'll explain um, you know, with some little pop-ups here how you do that exactly. Uh, but basically, you're going to be holding, when you when the play starts, you hold the left trigger to bring up your two icons. There, I found the best way to go is just to throw it deep because I had a linebacker covering. But basically, you hold the left trigger down, and that'll bring up your two icons. I find most times you're, you're either going to, you know, with this target passing system, if you don't really get it down, is a lot of times you'll have overthrows, and a lot of times you'll get sacked in this formation, especially because of the lack of coverage. So if you make a wrong decision and they're sending a full house blitz, it's really going to be hard. Uh, to get the timing down for this um, this new passing mechanic. You see I get sacked there. So the target passing thing is really like a last second adjustment. If you come out and you see, hey, I don't like this defense, you really got to make something happen with the new target passing, which can be really effective as you see here, I scored a touchdown. Uh, but I, I think I'll make a full video on the target passing. I don't think I'm going to go over that in this game, but um, there are there are tutorials out, in line, out online to, uh, to check out to show you how to do it, which help a little bit. Uh, but you really just have to mess around with it a little bit. So the last play I'm going to show is the is the screen, uh, which I think is I'm showing it last because I think it's the worst. Um, I'll show you this just as it ran. I, I basically ran this a couple times, and you're going to see how hard it is to actually get something. This is the first time I ran it, and you see I have to basically run. That was that was one guy trying to tackle me. I just basically ran aside, and um, you know got a, got a couple yards. Now here, look how this lineman just jumps. This defensive lineman just jumps over my offensive lineman. Uh, and then we get like a delayed blitz. But if you look on both sides, both sides are covered. The A route is covered. The X route is covered. There's there's guys just waiting there to make a play. And that's the consistent theme I got from this play. I thought this was going to be like the money play. But look at this here. You got a blitzing guy coming in, right? So if I throw that, he's right in the throwing lane. That's going to be either batted down or uh, maybe picked off. But he, either way, there's a guy right there waiting on A anyway. He would have broke off and tackled him. So I throw it to this guy six yards deep. And what do you know? He just goes up and gets clobbered by like two, three guys. So no blocking there whatsoever. This is a play that looks like it's going to have a huge blocking advantage. But EA had to dwarf it before it even came out. It's by making a defense to stop it and I, I don't understand that because I mean I'm glad they did because honestly I think this would have been really cheap if it would have stayed the way it was but basically every time I throw it the guy's like five or six yards deep and then there's no blocking whatsoever and I'm basically trying to break tackles of like two three guys so I started trying to hold it as long as possible to see if there was ever a time in the route where the guy would get open as you see I did there still didn't get open so what I decided and what I realized eventually is that if I hold the ball and the, the, re, the defenders react to the receiver, I can just take off with the quarterback. And I know I'm only using Joe Flacco, who's not a speedy guy at all, but I basically just found that if you take this take off and treat this like a quarterback uh, draw, it's essentially the best way to run this. Uh, and I also found that, you know, I would hold the ball, uh, try to, to kind of treat it like a toss play, where I would have the receiver behind me as a last option. But realistically, 
uh, the only way to run this is to um, is to take off with the QB. I mean, you can see there's only two guys there. Everybody else drops back. It gives you great running room. Here, I was thinking about possibly throwing it to that receiver. Um, like I said, I treat it like a toss play. So if that of defender, if the defender reacts to me when I go to take off, if he, if he goes away from the cornerback, then I have an option to throw to the cornerback. Like here, he reacts to me. I throw it to the receiver. And that's probably the best play you can get out of this, uh, which is kind of sad. I mean, this play is really not as good as you think it would be. But either way, the inside zone runs really good. Uh, and that's, you know, the best I can say about that. Too. So if you guys want to see uh, more breakdowns like this of some of the more unique formations, do me a favor and hit the like button. I'll do that. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Moist it out.